Um, regular expressions are ubiquitous. Everybody uses them, Perl, said, Ruby, etc. cetera. Uh, they're all basically a way to make a finite state automaton that matches strings. Or if you're, you know, like your math, this is how it works. I can explain it to you later, it's pretty boring. Anyways, there's a parser that's used by Radiant CMS and our CMS at work called Radius. It turns HTML style tags like these right here. It basically processes those like Markdown or some other you know, tag processing engine would work. However, it has a certain failure case, which I found last week. Uh, long story short, here's a tag with about 50 different uh, attributes in it, all machine generated. I put together an experiment after it looked like one of our web servers crashed, uh, showing in the left column here we have the number of attributes and the rest is the benchmark times. So it seems pretty normal until you get to about 13 and you scroll down and you notice that it's taking twice as long every time. And what I showed you on the previous screen was 40 attributes. That's 40 attributes is eight months. <laughs> So this had to change. Uh, I'm not gonna go sidetrack about how I debug that. It involves GDB and stack pointers. It's fun. So what I ended up doing was, at first I tried to understand the regex by turning this one line atrocity into a five line atrocity, which helped I was able to mess with it, break unit tests, not make it faster. So I gave up on regexes and I said, I've used Regal before, but one problem I've had with it is that it can only do regular languages, which is uh, Lisp has nested structures, it's not a regular language. XML, nested structure is not a regular language. However, that's a regular expression, it's only a regular language anyways. They're taking you know, some other code and turning it from a regular language and process processing it in a push down way. Uh, more math, push down basically means that your parser has a stack, it remembers where it is, what it's seen before, to an extent, and it can pop back out of a structure. So what I ended up doing was writing scan.rl, which instead of a seven line atrocity is like a hundred lines. But for the most part, it's, human readable might be a stretch, but you can tell what's going on. I mean, it's a tag that's either an open or self-closing tag, or it's a closed tag for something It has attributes. Here's how they're parsed. What Regal does is it takes this, turns it into, I think, about 300 lines of Ruby. Uh, it's fascinating stuff. Uh, you should definitely read it sometime. Yeah, it's 700 lines of Ruby. But by taking that one regular expression, blowing it up into a full-blown push-down automaton with Regal, I was able to make the 40 element regex go in, you know, I can't even count that fast, is how fast it went. Uh, so that's, you know, that's Regal. The weaknesses with Regal are, again, it can't do a regular or a push-down language. So what you have to do is you have to have, after you run it through Regal, what you end up doing is you end up going through it again, and you put tags in a stack, you remember where they are, you open them, you close them, etc. It's, there's a, another tool called Treetop for Ruby, and unlike Regal, it can't compile to C or Java, but what it can do is it can do the irregular languages. It's slower than Regal, it's not as popular, but it's you know, just as useful for the same sort of thing which is whenever you're not interested in validating a string, you actually want to parse it. Uh, any questions, any like technicalities or anything? There's another one out there that I used, and I can't think of the name of it right now, it's before Treetop, and it had a, I'm trying to think of the name, are you familiar with any other parser generators? Rack? You're not thinking of Rack? Right? No, 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 I'm actually trying to look it up right now. It was pretty good, I used it to write, to start writing a SQL parser. 
basically in Ruby. Okay. Which, once I actually started looking through the SQL 92 spec, I said, maybe this isn't such a good idea. But it was quite interesting along the way, and I'm just trying to remember what the name of it was, and then to see if anybody's played around it, and now I can't find it. So I'll have to go look for it, but there are a couple other ones. Did, have you ever done any parser stuff with, like, Antler and, and those other I have, Honestly, I've never done any more parser work. I haven't done it with, you know, classic tools at all. It's all been on the job. Um, I know, like, a little bit of, of Atomica theory, and that's my hammer. Uh, doesn't matter if it's a screw or a nail or a you know push down top of the language. I get hit it with something eventually. <laughs> so how was how was the experience <laughs> writing a parser? This was a one second uh, radius experience, and it went not quite as smoothly as my first time. The first time I sort of failed fast, and I realized I was trying to you know make radius do a non regular language, which is not what it wants to do. There's ridiculous hacks you can do, and then there's the give up and use treetop thing. Right. What do you mean by regular language? Uh, or back to yeah. It's, I can, I can put that now. You know how it is, we have to match up every set of parentheses? You can't do that to an infinite depth with a regular language. Uh, with a regular language, what you can do is you can, it's a state machine, basically. And a push down autonomy, which, will parse regular languages and other languages too. It remember it not only does it know what state it's in, but it has like a stack of, uh, like a state can push onto a stack or it can pop off the stack. And that sort of decides what path it takes to the state. I, I think my PDF has some. So what we have here is a state machine, and the, the notation is a bit convoluted, but whenever you pass on one of these error, or on one of the transitions, a regular language doesn't have any memory once it passes that transition. It only knows where it is, and it can read one, char one or lambda characters at a time. A push down autonomous remembers what's, what uh, transition arrows it's followed before, and that's the big difference. That's, you need to push down a top on the parse list to parse XML. To parse like a phone number or something, you can do it with a regular language. I found a tool by it, it's called Docker. Okay. okay. I, I, think, I think I can do it with my research a bit. Cool. Any other questions, additions? So are you going to contribute that back to Radiant? Uh, it's already on GitHub, I've already sent a pull request. Uh, I told GitHub to build a gem Wednesday afternoon. Uh, I'll see if it's built yet. Right. Uh, I, know, I know John Long, so I think he'd probably be pretty interested. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's, it's, our, it's not quite in production on our site yet, but it's on its way there. Any other additions, questions? Uh, ask me why I use GDB to debug Ruby. <laughs> Oh, that, I could spend like an hour on that. That is so much fun. Uh, anyways, I'm going to pass the mic. Uh, you've been a great audience. Is that appreciated?